Mm -hmm. Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two to five player game, Skyrockets Festivals of Fire, designed by Charlie McCarran and published by Floodgate Games, who helped sponsor this video. School might be out for the summer at the Mage Academy, but you and your friends just stumbled upon a surely not dangerous book called Magical Recreational Aerial Explosive Devices and You, Volume One. Sure, summer awaits, but there's always time for a little explosive magic. I mean, how hard could it be? Only one way to find out. Join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, you first need to select an event, and each event creates a challenge for your game, and there are 28 included in the deck, numbered from 1 to 28. The idea is that you'll attempt to complete an event successfully, allowing you to advance to the next one, going through them in order. That said, you can always pull out any event you've enjoyed and play it again any time. But in this video, we'll assume we're going in order, starting with the first event, setting the rest back in the box for now. The cards with this back are the fireworks, which you'll shuffle into a face-down deck. Your chosen event will show you how many firework cards to deal to each player in the area here. For the first event, this means each is dealt four, and we'll assume that we have two players. But do notice this value can change based on the event you're currently playing. And in some cases, the number of cards dealt will change based on the number of players. For this event, with two players, each is dealt 16 cards, but with five players, they each start with eight. And in some cases, the players aren't dealt anything at all. Either way, when you do have cards, you can examine your own, but keep them a secret from the other players. The remaining firework deck you should set within reach of the players, since players will need to draw from it. That said, some events instruct players to create their own personal draw deck, as we see with event 13. And in that case, players will only draw from their own deck rather than a shared deck like we have in event 1. Either way, now put this countdown track and the six sand timers in a central area. The event will instruct you on how to arrange them here. And the icons we see for red, yellow, purple, and orange mean that they begin the game upright. When you see circles, as we do for green and blue, this means they begin the game lying down. Also notice the orange timer is shown on a tile. That means you place it onto the value for space of the countdown track like this. I also want to point out that each sand timer has a unique symbol, which can help if you have any difficulties distinguishing the colors. Now set this crowd tile with these three double-sided crowd tokens placed onto its spaces with their star sides face up. Then give this first player token to the person who most recently saw fireworks. Or you can just pick someone randomly. And that's the setup. In Skyrocket's Festivals of Fire, you and the other players will be working together to create a captivating and magical Skyrocket show by playing cards that will cause the sand timers to flip. You'll be trying to drain sand from the timer on the countdown track, the orange one in this case, because that allows it to be advanced forward on the track. Get it to the final space, and you win. But at the same time, you must prevent sand from ever draining fully from the other sand timers by flipping them before that happens. Otherwise, you could lose. It's going to take some strategy, timing, and communication to succeed. So let's begin by looking at how you start the game. First, make sure that all the sand in each timer is settled into its bottom side before you begin. Then, when you're ready to start, flip every timer shown upright on the event so that their sand is now in the top half. Their sand will start draining, and the event has started. There's now no way to pause until you either win or lose, but to teach how the game works, I'm going to have to pause things and set up specific situations, so just keep that in mind if you see the sand in different places. With the game started, beginning with the first player and going clockwise around and around the table, each will take a turn. On your turn, you play a card from your hand face up on the table in front of yourself. Every card shows a combination of two colors related to two different timers. When you play a card, you must flip the two related timers, in this case, yellow and purple. However, you can take as long as you like to flip either of them. You could use two hands and flip them both at the same time, or flip one and then the other. Or wait a while, then flip one, wait a while again, and then flip the other. However, no one else can go until you've finished your turn. Just keep in mind, when it's your turn, you don't have to play a card right away. You might want to, but in some cases, it might be better to think about your options, talk to the other players, or perhaps wait until a timer is exactly where you want it before you play a card and flip it. As mentioned, aside from the timer on the countdown track, you don't want the others to ever run out of sand. So if I flip this yellow one, for example, well, now it's very close to running out. 
Also be aware, each timer runs out at a different rate. Red is the fastest at 30 seconds, then orange at 40, yellow is 50, green 60, blue is 70, and purple is the longest at 80 seconds. So keep that in mind as you're playing. Now as we have here, sometimes sand timers begin the game lying down. When you play the color of one of those, just stand it upright so its sand is in its top half like this. Orange is a special timer in this event. It's on the countdown track and can only be flipped if its top half is empty. If you play a card for it while it's still draining as we have here, you still flip the other color, but ignore the orange one. This is the one situation you don't have to flip a timer you've played the color for. If you play a card showing orange and its timer is empty or becomes empty during your turn, flip and advance it to the next lowest value on the track. So the next time it runs out, you'd flip and advance it here, and so on. Either way, after flipping both the timers on your played card, or only one if it showed orange before orange had run out, your turn ends by drawing a new card from the deck. At that point, and only then, does the next player in clockwise order take their turn playing one of their cards and flipping the related timers. Keep in mind, for some events like we see here, there is no specific turn order. Instead, after one player goes, any other player can follow, including the player who just went. If two or more players accidentally play cards at the same time, they should quickly decide who will be the one to resolve their card while the others take theirs back. Of course, for event one, this can't happen because you will take turns one at a time in clockwise order. All right, we mentioned earlier that when the timer on the countdown track runs out, that's good because it means the next time a card would flip it, it advances. And no matter what event you're playing, as soon as this timer hits the final space here, the players all win. So that's ultimately what you're trying to do. On the other hand, if any of your other timers run out, your skyrocket show has hit a snag. Any players who notice a timer that's run out must immediately flip one of these crowd tokens with the star face down. This represents the crowd getting bored with your show. You then immediately flip the drain timer back over. Now keep in mind, this doesn't count as taking a turn. This is something that is resolved while a turn is happening because, as we said, the game never pauses. If all three of the crowd tokens are ever face down, the game ends, you lose, and the crowd leaves unimpressed with your skyrocket show. For this reason, communication during the game is very important. While you can't show your hand of cards to the other players, you can talk openly about any of their details. For example, I might say, hey, I see the red timer's about to run out. I don't have any red, do you? The other player might reply, I do have one with red, so play something quick, then I can go. But I'll also have to flip purple, which would make purple close to running out, so get ready to flip purple back if you can on your turn. Some events, like this one, will restrict communication, and if so, just be sure to follow its specific rules. So just to summarize, during the game, you'll play a card on your turn and flip the related timers. Unless it shows the countdown timer when it still has sand running through it, in which case you just ignore flipping that one. However, if you play the countdown timer's color when it has run out of sand, you then flip and advance it on its track. After, draw a replacement card, and then the next player goes. If any of the other timers run out of sand, immediately flip a crowd token and that timer, but keep playing. If you can get this timer to the final space, everyone immediately wins. You then collect a sheet from this pad and record your score by filling in the number of star tokens for that event based on how many are still showing in the crowd. Three is the best score, but as long as at least one star is still showing, you've completed the event. You can then reset and play again to get a better score, or just advance to the next event. On the other hand, if all of these tokens are flipped face down before this countdown timer gets to the last space, the event ends and the players all lose. Reset the event and try again. Either way, anytime you begin a new game, just ensure you pass the first player token clockwise. And those are the core rules, though I should mention a couple of situations that can happen. If a player ever accidentally knocks over a timer in the excitement, there's no penalty, just stand it back up. If you're not sure which side it was on, just flip it to the side with less sand on top. Also, in the rare case that you don't have any cards in your hand to play, your turn is just skipped and the next player goes. In addition to the score pad, you'll also find this guide which divides the events into grouped sections. You don't mark on this sheet. Instead, this provides a narrative story connecting the different events as you play through them. So feel free to read this aloud as you start each new section.
I should also point out the game comes with this envelope. As it explains here on the back, you open this after completing all the other events numbered 1 to 28, as this contains the final events 29 and 30. I want to leave the various events for you to discover as you play, but there are two types that might be good to go over together. With this event, when flipping any timer except red, which is the countdown timer in this scenario, you must stack it on top of any other timer, again, except red. Or you can flip a timer that is on top of another timer and set it on the table. You can also stack a timer on top of another stack, like this. <laughs> the only thing you can't do is flip a timer that's already on the table and then leave it on the table. Only if it's already on a stack can it be put back on the table when it's flipped. Other events will allow for stacking timers too. Just be aware, cards you play from your hand never affect timers that are under other timers. Just ignore their symbol on the card you played. If you're having trouble stacking timers, feel free to arrange them side by side in a column, treating them as stacked. Just make sure you know which end of the column is the top of the stack. I also want to point out that some events will refer to using firework cards with this burst symbol. If so, you go through the deck and find the ones with that matching symbol as shown here. Now again, I suspect you'll enjoy discovering the various events as you play, but for those curious, feel free to pause the video and read a few of these if you'd like a sample of the different challenges you'll face when playing the game. As you start to improve and want a greater challenge, the back of the rulebook includes a challenge mode that suggests swapping whatever timer is shown on the countdown track for one that takes longer to drain. So when playing event one, instead of using the orange timer on the countdown track, you'd swap it out for the yellow one. Also note there's a glossary on the back of the rulebook covering many of the common terms that you'll find on the different events, so refer to this when playing if you have any questions. Otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play Skyrocket's Festivals of Fire. If you have any questions at all about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can join our Patreon team, which I'll have linked below. But until next time, thanks for watching.